Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. Welcome back. I'm starting up a live gameplay commentary here, and actually we're going to be going into regular control, the skill base, because I've noticed the past 15, 20, 30 games I've played, there's no stacked teams in there. Like, they're all in classic mix, so if you want to get away from the stat farmers, the 5 and 6 stacks all the time, try controls. Try one of the rotating playlists. Now, it's, of course, it's going to be different every single time. You're going to find them at some point, but out of 15, 20, 30 games, the max stack I found was a three, a couple twos, but the majority of the games are just a bunch of solo players, like freelance, so it's been fantastic. But the whole point of this commentary is to talk about the final auto rifle. It's going to be the 600 RPM. I talked about high impact, adapted, like the Braytech that is going to be the worst in the Crucible right now. They're in a very, very bad spot. I did a live gameplay with the Season AR, and I also did an in-depth review on the Rapid Fire Frame, Reckless Oracle. Those are going to be down in the description. The extreme ends, fast firing or slow firing, are doing really, really well. Now, these 600s are in that middle spot. They have the fastest time to kill in the Crucible at 0.8. And the whole point is to explore how they're doing in the sandbox, the state of them right now. And honestly, just because the hand cannons and the pulse rifles got their range nerf, they're within that competitive range. And with an auto rifle, it's very relaxed. You can do some crouch strafing, make them miss a couple shots, and you can compete. I'm also going to be using the Prophet of Doom. This is the one from the raid. And I've had a lot of people say review this. The deal for me with shotguns, my honest opinion, if you haven't noticed, I don't review shotguns. I could, but the long and short of it is this. Well, first of all, I have a retold tail that's phenomenal with Quick Draw Rampage that I use a lot. This one can be really good with its range stat, its slideways rampage. But with shotguns, with these frames, with different things, you know, we, we have the precision frame here, really, really good. Uh, our high impacts are good. The deal is, like, we can get a one-hit consistent kill range, seven, eight meters, whatever it is. I could aim low, I could get numbers, and do various things, but in a gunfight, that's not happening. I'm knee sliding, you're knee sliding, you're jumping, I'm jumping, they're up to the top left, there's level changes, and ultimately, there's not a consistent one-hit kill range because these are RNG pellet spread. So if I were to start reviewing shotguns, it would be on that. It would be more so the feel of it, and to me, the long and short of it is, it's either going to kill or it's not going to kill, as far as a one-hit kill range. And I'm good friends with Fallout, I applaud all the work that he's done, and he even admits it, they're very, very frustrating to try and test. I'm also using the 21% Delirium, I'm on Middle Tree Sentinel, which I never use. Uh, with the Ursa, so we're going to have a little fun with that. We have on Oppressive Darkness with a Suppressor Grenade. I have on Traction with a Shotgun Scavenger. It should be pretty fun. It is worth noting, and I had a long queue time, we do have on Spinning Up for 600 RPM to talk about 600 RPM state right now in the Crucible. And hopefully we get into a lot of engagements because they can outduel. But it is worth noting talking about Arc Logic, this season's Lectern, Eris Morn, Shadow Keep weapon. Now, it's kind of it's kind of a weird perk pool, right? On the, on the right perk node, we have Rampage. It's the only damage dealing perk, but it has Demolitionist, Tap the Trigger, Range Finder, Triple Tap. Shield Disorient is one of them. And uh, on the left perk node, there's this really special one. There's Overflow. There's only five or six total weapons in the game that have Overflow. So the one I've been going for, and these are just the Arc Logics on my Titan. I've probably deleted 15 of them. I'm looking for Overflow with Demolitionist or Overflow with Rampage. The Galron's right hand, the high impact AR from a couple raids ago, has Overflow Demolitionist. It's phenomenal. It'd be really nice on an energy weapon. But other than that, I mean, that's the only role I, I would truly use. There are some really nice ones like this. For an actual pure dual weapon, I'm on console, so this helps out. We have increased range, accurized, polygonal for increased ability. Moving target, greater stray speed, and when you're aiming down sights, you get better target acquisition. So that's a passive plus five aim assist when aiming down sights. Then you add on a targeting adjuster, then you add on something to your helmet. Then you have to have the trigger, short period of increased stability and accuracy on the initial trigger pull. So like for a pure dueling weapon, pure dual roll, that's good. Uh, but I'm looking for the overflow role, and with Suros, I chose it because a lot of players have that, and a lot of players can relate to that and try it out if they want. Uh, and we're going to see if we're going against any stack teams. It'd be kind of awkward if we find a six stack right now. But look at that. That's the same thing, man. The stacks aren't in there. It's just, you know, a whole bunch of solo players having a gentleman's game. And of course, I mean, I, you can click on any one of them, and you're going to find the meta weapon or something, but look at this guy. Randy's throwing knife, mind bitter. So it isn't pure meta all the time with, with some of these guys, and that's good. You're always gonna have diversity in a lobby, but I have noticed this playlist, the stat farmers and stacks simply aren't in here, and it makes sense that they're not in here because skill-based is involved. They wanna go into classic. And of course, connection is a little bit better there, but for the most part, that's not the true reason why they're going in there. Control's a little bit different. We're gonna grab this and go straight to B. This is the side that we want. Out there at C on pad is a horrible spawn. 
Um, and I am working on the next installment of my How to Improve Your KD series. Oh, uh oh. Say, no way that hits me. That's so far away. All right. Gonna move out here. Our entire team is down. I wanna actually pull them right back into them. It's one of those times where we can't really be aggressive. Uh oh. Oh, come on, game. They overran our teammates. Why do you have your shotgun out? What are you doing? Look at this. Look at this. And believe me, we're going to talk about that in the next video. Like, I'll probably insert this clip into that video. Like, it, it's nuts. Whatever we do, we just don't want to take C. Kind of rounding out and trying to help. Just tighten things, baby. Knee slide. All right, now's our push on Bravo. Like, it duels well, y'all. Like, 600s duel well, especially with the spinning up perk. You can get a little bit faster than a point eight TTK. Is he going to come up, up, and over? We're going to meet him. I shouldn't have done that, but we were trying to help out the teammate there. We did. We just couldn't get it going. And B, it's good. We have teammates pushing B. So we're gonna try to hit it from this choke point. Actually, there's a couple out here. Good job, teammate. You're in the lead. Make sure we grab this, make sure we had it. Bold play there for the 45 meter recluse. And we talked about it in the map series. I mean, if you're up here, you want to be pivoting off of this this area. Just gonna keep pressure on that because we have a teammate moving up. No reason to really push him. That is their spawn. They can come into us. Good job, teammate. All right, I do, like, literally I've only used Ursa a couple times. Wish me luck. And I know for sure I have to block. We have to get off the scene, though, now. Luna's howls to the left are not forgotten. It's probably not forgotten. Let's be, let's be real here. Did I not get it? I'm using the Delirium. Alright, we have a bow guy to the right. I can only peek this. See? Like, that was a bad play. I talked about it the entire game. Ugh, don't do that. Like, that pad spawn is so heavy. And we knew they had a bow guy. We knew that... With the way they were playing... Like, that wasn't gonna fly. And I knew better. We, we costed our streak right there. He just bubbled that. Can't do anything about that. What we can do... He has a shotgun. Really, game? We're gonna let them stay at C. You can't push them too much, guys. Matter of fact, I'm coming back. See, that's bad. He has weapons of light when he gets out of this bad boy. <laughs> now he has a proctor clues. You know what? This is good. I like this. I'm coming hard in the paint. I'm not sure how far this guy is, but we're going to put this up. I think that they're spawning at Bravo. I heard him late spawning out in generators and pad, and we're always going to spawn there until we flip the spawn. So first priority is Bravo. And remember on this map, we talked about it in the map series, you can cap it from right here. So you could use this as a pivot point, looking left and looking right. Oh, do your worst. GG's. And that guy just got domed. We 
job. My, my role is to take Alpha right here. We have to take Alpha. And we already spawn flipped him to C, so that's good. I don't really feel comfortable with an AR. I, I love this outside lane. I mean, we, we can try it. Keep really close inside that way. See, I, I, don't, I don't really feel comfortable. We know a lot of people are using scouts in this meta. I don't feel comfortable out there. I can work better with an AR on the inside, but it was worth a try. We're gonna knee slide to stay off the radar and come behind these two. Oh no. There's not a forgotten guy right behind me. That is why we have fire teams. Stop picking on him with that recluse, man. Good job. Our team's doing well, okay. It's kind of hard on console to keep that bad boy steady. I don't like that one bit. Even with the damage reduction. Move back into B. See if we can get into a couple more duels with the Soros regime. For the most part, we've been winning our duels and our effective range, which is what we want. This guy's got a shotgun. We heard him from a mile away. Oh, that sucks. I'm not the most graceful titan, like I, especially on middle tree. This isn't my thing. I don't really do that. 151.95, we did good. I would say that probably 25 or 26 opponents defeated. The main thing, we were controlling the game, making sure we weren't on pad out there at the C spawn. That's one of the worst things that you can do. Uh, 28, 4, 6, 7, 3 captures. We had a couple opponents that weren't capping zones, but you know, it is what it is. But the 600 RPMs are doing well within the current sandbox, mostly due to the nerf to the range on the hand cannons and the pulse rifles. They're kind of sliding right in, so try the Suros, try another 600 RPM if you haven't tried them in a long time, like Gnawing Hunger or something like that, and let me know what you think about them. If you're new to the channel, remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Hopefully by the end of the week, if not next week, we're going to have out that next series, and again, I take a lot of pride in those. I don't do them every week, or, you know, I, I put a lot of time into the gameplay to make sure it's all easy to understand. That way, it's a genuine attempt to help, because that's what I want to do. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.